Hello, my name is Jacob Dudman and I am talking to FR Conventions. Yes, I remember the audition process. Well, the audition, it was a strange one for me because I did a videotape audition whilst I was filming something else and that was to play Sky. Um, but then they ended up wanting someone uh, more muscly and more blonde. Um, so they went with Danny. Uh, and then they said, oh, I'm not sure this guy's Sky, but maybe, uh, maybe we should see him as Riven. And so I went and met uh, Sadie and uh, we, we auditioned together as Riven and Beatrix weird thing in retrospect. Uh, and then I met Freddie, and I knew that Freddie was meant to be cast as Riven. I just had that air about him. So um, so I knew that those guys were gonna get the roles. So I was like, great, okay, I can forget about this show. And then a few days later, I got a call from the producers saying, look, there was this uh, character that we weren't really gonna do anything with, but um, we were gonna kill him off in the fifth episode. But now we've met you and we really want you to be in our show, so we want to write up this character for you called Sam and have a look, see what you think about it. And, uh, and I was on board, so that happened. It was a strange, strange way of getting a role. Um, and then my first day on set was with Alicia. It was the day that uh, Sam walks with um, Musa, the first time they sort of have on-screen time together and that was really nice, but they'd all been filming for a month before I got there, so I was a late coming to the, to the room. Yeah, I think there's always a pressure when, you know, there's a beloved franchise already that you're stepping into. Um, I know that everyone in the show has been very keen to put their own stamp on it, their own twist on, uh, on the Winx world, universe, uh, and I, th I like to think of it as an addition to that universe uh, rather than being the core representation of it. There are so many different angles, you know, you've got the movie, you've got the series, all this sort of stuff, and, uh, and our show is a, a different version of it, perhaps for the same audience, but also a different audience who may not have been introduced to the world. So um, I knew there was a, there was a sort of uh, expectation. Um, but when you meet the creatives, the writers, the producers, and then the lovely cast, you sort of know that it's going to be successful because everyone's working together to try and make it the best that it can be. It's, it's a delight, it's really, really nice. And especially because, you know, um, I sort of came in and I, I didn't, uh, I wasn't there for the whole time of filming and uh, we shot a lot of our scenes together um, but I didn't really feel like a core part of the, the cast because they were all together all the time filming so many scenes. So to come out of it and, and be told that that relationship really had a good response was, was amazing and unexpected. Uh, but what I really love about their relationship is that there's someone who is going through a lot uh, mentally, their mental health and all the, the difficulties that they're facing and they meet someone who helps them through that, through just their being, their being present and calm, and I think that we all need someone like that. And so it's a sort of joy for me to be able to, to play that role uh, and to facilitate Muse's storyline as well. We were very lucky that we, we actually finished season one just before the pandemic. So, um, so season two was sort of set when things were slightly opening up again from the pandemic, um, which was great and we filmed in the summertime, so that was different. Season one, we were very cold filming season one in winter, uh, but we had a lovely summer to film uh, season two. And um, for me, coming back was a surprise. I didn't always know that I was coming back. I think all the other members of the cast were on a, th th uh, like a multiple um, year contract. Um, and I was only signed up to do season one. Again, because the character originally they were just gonna kill off in the fifth episode. Uh, but then, yeah, like you said, the fan response, um, the producers asked me whether I wanted to come back and tell more of a storyline. So it's been great for me to, it's been a lovely surprise for me to come back and also um, tell sort of Sam's story because I think in season one, like I said, Sam was uh, there for Muse's storyline and to help facilitate that and in season two he gets a bit of his own adventure which is fun.
Maybe. I think that um, I think part of the appeal of CERN is that we're living in a very turbulent, scary world and there's someone there who's completely reliable and you know that um, you know that they're always going to be there for you and a calming figure. So I think we all need uh, someone like Sam in our lives. And I think I, I think that might be what fans have responded to. Um, and I think that's what's so scary for Muser in the end of series one is that the person who's so stable, who is so calming, suddenly is thrown into this scary situation. And, and when the person who uh, has been your rock isn't there for you, then you have to stand up for yourself. Um, so I, I, I think that um, Sam is a very lovable character. I, I love him and, and don't claim any of the credit for his popularity because I think that um, he, is a, he is a person that we can all aspire to be more like. Very free, very loose, not tied up in their own mental issues, um, very uh, happy to go with the flow of life and walk through walls. <laughs>well season two i've been saying this weekend at the convention um, that fans shouldn't go in with their expectations of what they think the story is going to be like because when i read the script it was not at all like i expected it was like the writer just went uh, which is great i think sub subverting expectations um, i think that it's uh, it's it's more dangerous more exciting in parts it's scarier and uh, in terms of Sam's storyline, he has a lot more to do, especially at the start of the, the story. We meet him, uh, he's recovered from his burned one uh, injury, hurrah, and uh, he feels much more a part of the, the Wink Suite uh, uh, group. Um, and, uh, and he, uh, yeah, he, uh, he, has a, he has a tough time. Yeah, I, I love conventions. I've been lucky enough to do a couple before with um, with Doctor Who Universe, and so when I was uh, invited to come and do one for Fate, then that was amazing because um, you know I, I love the show and, and I know that it has such a enthusiastic following. So I'm really excited as a fan of fantasy TV shows as well to be a part of that sort of environment. Um, and Paris is such a beautiful city that I couldn't really pass up the opportunity to to come and be here. Yeah, well, I'm very lucky as an actor that the, the different projects I've done have been so different. Um, what I loved about The A-List was we were making a show uh, for a, a younger young adult audience um, where they get to enjoy the drama and the sort of experience of the, the trials and tribulations of being a teenager whilst also not having to be exposed to things that maybe they shouldn't be watching, uh, and I think that a lot of young adult shows uh, show things that young teenagers shouldn't be watching. So I was very pleased to be part of that. Um, I think it was also just a, a celebration of um, of uh, a friendship, and so I enjoyed that about the A-list. Uh, Medici, similarly, I enjoyed sort of being part of a story that was all about family and what you'll do for family. Um, also very, very cool filming in Tuscany and being a part of that world. I was great, I was very grateful to uh, join season three because it meant that I got to watch season one and two before we started filming, so I became a fan of the show before I got to be in it, which was very exciting. Um, and, uh, and yeah, the, the Stranger, again, about family, about um, a sort of, for me, my character in that, uh, it, was, it was really telling the story of a boy who has to become a man and um, about someone who has to look after their younger brother, but also hold it together for their dad. So I think all of the projects I've done have really had a nice human spirit behind them and, um, and the stories that we, we need to tell because there are a lot of stories out there that don't have good messages in and I think that the ones that really stick with people or hopefully will stick with people are the ones that hold up a mirror to society and ask us to be better in our lives. <laughs>